you everybody coming at you from out in the wilderness we got it's a nice rainy muddy day and it's also an exciting new day because Nick is working so behind the camera today we have my brother <laughs> so anyway, I didn't want him to see my face <laughs> Jimmy don't say much but anyway uh, he usually goes by Jim but I grew up calling him Jimmy so that's what I'll refer to him as now Anyway, um, for my longtime viewers, you may remember about 10 years ago, I showed a, a tree grill. I think I called it a swamp grill. And then about six years later, I showed tree gorilla, another one. Well, I have made a third generation tree grill, and it is a beast. It is a monster. It is heavy duty. You could beat a bear to death with it. <laughs> so before I show it, for my newer viewers, or people that don't know what tree grills are, I'm going to go ahead and show, I'm going to set up and show all three of them, all right? And the idea, you might want to say, what's the idea behind strapping a grill to a tree? Well, if you want the peace and solitude of the wetlands or a swamp, you can't have a ground fire for cooking or making coffee. And if the ground is real muddy, or if there's snow on the ground, or, or if you're like me and you got back problems, you just don't want to bend over a fire. You want to stand up and cook your food. So, Hey, I think you should tell them why Nick's not here. Oh. They might wonder. Nick is working full time. Uh, he has a full time job now. So uh, my brother's going to be filling in a lot because me filming myself makes it a lot harder. And it's great for me and my brother to spend time together. So he has agreed to fill in when Nick is not here. All right. So we're going to set up the first tree grill and I'm going to kind of talk about it and the way it was designed and what it was for and then we're going to move on to the next one and then we're going to show the final one. Alright, sound good? Alright. Alright, now if you remember years ago a lot of you may not have seen it but this is the little kit that I made right here and it is made to attach to a tree and the way this thing is made uh, it's, it's, it's a very small I'm going to go ahead and pull it out, and I'm going to show you this is the contents of it. And sometimes I'll add, oh, something hit the ground. That ain't good. Oh, all right. I have a piece of carbon fiber that protects the tree, which is, this was actually an idea from a, a viewer. So I have a plate, and usually I'll keep like a folding fork. More about that in a minute. I'm going to set that down. And then I have a a pan. Alright, now, let's set this thing up. Alright, this is the nuts and bolts of it. It's basically a grill with three little stobs in it, and then here's three more stobs. So, the way this thing works here... What's a stob? Or a lug. Oh, okay. Round thing. Well, you can put a screw in it. Yeah, no, we put rods in it. That's oh, the thing. When you okay. make these out of stainless steel, if you put a screw in, the heat will seize it up and you'll never get it apart. Oh, okay, that's a good tip. Yeah, so, yeah, if anything you make out of stainless steel, avoid threads. Now, see right here, these things, they just drop in. Just like that. And then, you take this and see, it's got three little lugs on top. Lugs, stobs, it's, it's a southern thing to call it a stob. <laughs> anyway, okay, that's the way it looks. All right, now I had to cut out that part. Uh, be careful, Jimmy. There's a big hole right here. Okay. <laughs> okay. I fell in it and fell over. Now this is this is the assembled part here, and there's a ring here, and then here's the grill. But it actually goes this way. Now this takes two bungee cords to fit to a tree. Now this is very small, very compact, very lightweight for what it is. But it was kind of a complicated design, so manufacturing something like this is probably out of the question. So what you do with this thing now, and I'm going to talk more about these bungee cords in a minute. These are carabiner bungee cords, and they used to be sold by, under a name of a company called Secure Tight, and I think now they're called Keeper. But they come from the factory with carabiners, and I add the cloth sleeves to keep them from getting wore out and snagged and frayed on trees. And it makes them look cool. <laughs> so the way this works is the way it's got the V is you just shove it against the tree to whatever you're selected, whatever height you want it. And then you just reach around the tree. We had to swap trees because that one over there was too small a diameter. And 
I didn't bring the really, really small bungee cords. But once again, the way this works, see it's got a V on it. Oh, that reminds me, the old video from 10 years ago, I called this the V grill, I think, because it's got that V on it. But what you do is you place it against the tree and put a little pressure on it. Then you take the bungee cord here and clip it. Then run this bungee cord around and clip it, just like that. All right. Now, you can, which is what I should have done, you can lay the carbon fiber against the tree and then push this against it. Or, you can simply stuff it like this. And that's usually what I do. The new design has it the other way. Now the heat, let's see here. Oh, the pan. Okay, the fire pan has got these three little notches in it here. And they fit right inside here. Where's that? At? They fit right in there. Now that's a very small fire pan, and you have to continuously add fire to it, fire, add wood to it. And as you can see, the top part here. So you got about room for one pan. That's why I say this is like a a one-person grill. Now, the other thing, and there's. I've, you met people that have watched my videos before may see this, but this is a scrap piece of uh, aluminum, um, aluminium. Everybody makes fun of the way I pronounce it. How do you pronounce it? Well, I know a lot of people outside America say aluminium or aluminium, something. Aluminium, yeah, and that's the only way I can proper, properly say it. Aluminum? Yeah, I guess. Everybody makes fun of the way I do it. But anyway, the way this thing works is you clip on it, and you're going to line one of these holes up with the end of the grill. And so the way that thing works is you clip it so that that's secure to the tree. What's that for? It's a shelf. Oh. Isn't that cool? That's great. Yeah. And see, that way, when you're working, it's like if you're, if you're walking through a swamp or kayaking through a swamp, I'll attach my backpack to a tree. And then when I'm here cooking, say I've got a tray right here. Where I can put everything, and I can cook right here. All right. So let's get a, a close up of this thing, and then we'll move on to the to the next. Say the wood goes right here in this fire pan, and you're slowly adding the wood. And here's the grill. And if you if you used more than one thing, it would really, you know, there's there's not much room. Some of these tables here I've made out of plexiglass. Now, like I say, the heat. This will protect the tree from the heat. But let's move this out of the way so that you can look a little bit better. I'd like these tables to be the aluminium because that way you can pull off your hot pan and, and set it on there. Because I have made these out of plexiglass. But that's the original tree grill or the grill. All right. It takes a total of three bungee cords. Two for the grill, one for the table. All right. Isn't that neat? All right. It's great for... Uh, Aluminum cools off a lot faster than steel, so if it's hot, it will cool off the second you move the... Oh, yeah, yeah. It could also That could also help cooling off your food a little bit so that you can quickly eat. And then you can just pull the pan out with a pair of vice grips, I mean a pair of a, a, a multi-tool or a piece of leather and just dump the fire out and douse out the fire if you need to. So, But you have to constantly add sticks to it. All right, let's move on to the next one. The next one is a little bit bulkier, a little bit bigger, and is good for two people. Like, you know, preferably, the, the whole idea behind this was originally kayaking through a swamp. If you can't find any dry ground, you can just stop wherever it's shallow and set up and cook. Now, this is usually what I keep in here. And How about snow? Yes, snow for... If you don't want to, it, it, that's kind of rough having a, a fire on the snow as far as, now if you're staying somewhere for a week, you'll clear out of the spot. That ain't a big deal. But if you're like me, in one day, out the next, or if you're just going to stop on a, on, a, on a trip somewhere and cook, yeah, it's a pain doing it with the snow. Now this is a little bit different design, and it's kind of bulky design. And that first one, when I made the first bag for the first grill, it was just a cloth bag. But this actually has a Tyvek lining, so the bag got a little bit better. Now with this one, I like to carry a deep pan because this thing is welded with a couple of rods here that can be bent. So we got a pan, 
we got a Sierra cup, we got a small plate, and I've got a lot of cookware, but these are the items that stay with this one. Now, and then a spoon, knife, and fork. Now, when you eliminate this, this is the basis of this grill, which is really, really, it's, it's, there's really not much. Now, here's the grill, and it has two lugs on the back of it. And then this thing here looks kind of complicated, and this is one of the things that I doubt any manufacturer would ever rip off my idea because it's so complicated. <laughs> but there's a V on the bottom and a V on the top, and then there's, there's two wings right here, and then there's two of these things out. Now, the way this works, that this was the lid, stainless steel lid. I thought it was a hubcap. Yeah, well, it's, it's a funny thing. The idea that came from my mentors actually used hubcaps. It's amazing that you mentioned that. Uh, they would tie hubcaps between trees in a swamp and have a fire on it and cook off of that. So that's where the idea came from. I didn't really come up with this idea. I just came up with the design. Now this, you can slide this in here. Now this has got a little bit more distance away from a tree. So the fire never affects the tree because heat rises. It don't go that way. And so this is a little further away. But now this thing right here, you don't want just these welded joints holding it. And that's why these rods are on here. Because you'll take these rods and bend this down and bend that down. See, just like that. And you can see it's kind of up a little bit because when you put weight on it, it'll pull it down. So what we're going to do now is we're going to take a bungee cord. This only uses one bungee cord. You put that bungee cord on there and you walk up to the tree and strap it around and see just like that and see that thing's kind of at an angle going up like that if it's at too much of an angle you can put a piece of wood in there and tilt it down all right let's see, let's see if I, can grab I think of most of the heat is going to go straight up and straight down it does see right here i can just pull this forward and put a couple pieces of wood and see that levels it out a little bit more right there and then this thing, which is a stainless steel lid, there's four pieces of stainless steel heavy wire, just like that. And so you hook it on here, in the back, and here. And see, so there you go. And you can see the distance from the tree. And generally, you know, there were some people that had some concerns on that last video that they're like, oh, you're hurting the tree. Well, the heat tends to rise and most of the time when you have a fire, you can put your hand here. Or, like I said, you can you can put a piece of carbon fiber in there. Trees aren't that sensitive. Yeah, a little bit of heat ain't going to kill a tree. Yeah. And see, this thing right here, you can put this pan right here. Put it in the middle, or you can get a bigger pan. You can put your Sierra cup to the side to keep your food warm. Or you can put the Sierra cup in the back back there that once you have some food in it, keep it warm. Now, the table for this is not in the bag because I used it for something else. So, so, this is pretty much it. I have another table that goes with this. I didn't bring it. So, that was the one that was called Tree Grilla. So, this is where all the wood goes. It's a much larger pan, so you can have a much larger fire. And honestly, you could probably, you could probably put two pans on this thing. And... You can put a plate back here, and that plate is where, like, if you're using a spatula or a spoon, and you can set it on there. Like, if you want to make a stew. See, this thing's actually, this is like a, a pot and a pan. You could have a stew, and that's your lid. You could have a place to put this. Stir your stew, put this on, put it on there. And sometimes I bring little uh, hooks, and I'll hang them on here. Sometimes you can hang your hooks right here, so... It's a complete kit, complete grill off the ground. All right. So now let's move on to the new one, the super heavy duty tree grill. New outfit. It's a lot bigger and a lot heavier, but this is good for two to three people, really. And this is, look, a spider at this time of year. Anyway, with this stuff here, uh, this is more for canoe and kayak use or maybe a sled or, in my case, a bicycle. Now what this is, I made a real nice cover for this thing, and the covers are even evolving. And you pull it out, and it's 
a table, a big table. The back side, you can see this used to be part of a heavy duty air conditioning system, an industrial one. And so I cleaned the top to make it nice and I didn't really get all the paint off the bottom. So that's recycling to the max. There's that table, there's that, here's the grill. The grill is a beast. There is no telling how much you can put on this grill. And the bars are quarter inch thick stainless steel. And I'm telling you, you could beat a bear to death with that thing. That is a, that is a heavy duty grill right there. So that is the nuts and bolts of this grill. And the bag is lined with a very heavy plastic that in a bad situation, if you had to fill this thing up with water, you needed a bucket. You could actually, this is a waterproof bag that I made. The inside is a very, it's like the type of uh, material that they make uh, sun, sun roofs out of over RVs, things like that. So, you know, like I say, if you was in a bad situation and you had to walk off to a river or something to get some water, you could do that. And here, this is just kind of a junky canvas bag that I made. And it closes up to here and I put a piece of leather to seal up the top. The leather is good for handling hot, hot pots and things. And this is part of it. This is part of it. And then I have a kettle in here. Now, this stuff here, I put in a bag because this is the fire bowl. People may recognize this years ago, that this was the aluminum, aluminum fire bowl that turned applesauce pink. So it was originally an aluminum Dutch oven, but there's something wrong with it, so I turned it into an extra heavy-duty fireball. So anyway, and that's that's the reason why, like I say, when I package this stuff away, I'm gonna I'm gonna put it in the bag right there. Now this is the first part of it right here. This is something that I came up with recently. These are two stainless steel, two pieces of stainless steel tubing, very lightweight. This is not pipe. This is stainless steel tubing. It's three quarter. You can you can probably see them. Three quarter outside diameter, three sixteen stainless. Very thin stuff. And what I've done is I've deburred it and I put a notch on the end. So the first thing you're going to do is make these. Hey, show the notch closer because I couldn't see it. Yeah, okay, that's good. So I cut a notch in both of them. That's good. All right, and I'll show you what that does in a minute. But what you want to do is get some sticks and cut them and carve them and shove them up inside here because these are going to be two legs. So I'm going to do that off camera then I'm going to show you how we attach a grill to the tree. I got now, I probably could have got a straight stick but I went ahead and grabbed this one because it was handy. But what you want to do is you want to carve these things to where this squeezes on. See? And that is a leg. And then you want to do the other one so that's the other leg. And what you want to do is you want to set these for the height, for your chosen height of the grill. And I think this will work right here. All right. So the next thing that you do, it's a very simple operation. It's just like the others. You grab a bungee cord and you clip it on. Now the first thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to, oh, and I want to show you something on this. This is one of the pieces that's cut up. The name of this carbon fiber blanket is Velvet Shield. Can you see that? I have never shown that before, but it's a fire resistant carbon fiber blanket. All right, so what you want to do is you want to take it and put it about right there. <clears throat> this will take an extra bungee. Let's see, I'm gonna try this one because it's not under that much pressure. There we go. All right, so now the tree is nice and safe. Now it's like, especially like if you're gonna be set up for a week somewhere or a couple of days, you wanna protect the tree. All right, so we've got this. Let's put these in the front. And we're gonna put this grill about right here and stretch this bungee around and clip it on. And that's it. You move these out. And put it on. Now you may ask, you may be like, now why do you need the stainless? Well, I'm fixing to show you why. You want to kind of level things up? I'm going to move this. I don't like the way that's set. 
couldn't you fabricate some dowels or something to put on that to bring with you? You could. If, if you're traveling heavy. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, you could. Yeah, if you had a kayak or something, you could just make the legs. But I was trying, it's already kind of heavy, so I was trying to make it as, as, as lightweight as possible. So once you've got these things holding this up, the next part of it is you take... And there's, these are bronze instead of stainless steel. I made them bronze so in case I had to bend them. But you take three of these. Is it hard to bend stainless steel? Yeah, very hard. And with these, you could, if you had to bend these, you could bend them with a multi-tool. Now there's no lug here from the factory. There's only three lugs. So these are taller than the one in the back. The one in the back is shorter, so it's genuinely going to lift up the back a little. But you just clip these on. Is that what holds the fire? Yes, that's what holds the fire. And we're actually going to have a fire in this to break this in and fry it. All right, now, if you, as you can see, this is kind of, <clears throat> see how it's tilting this way? It's actually throwing the fire towards this direction away from the tree. Now you understand now why I had to have the stainless steel tubes instead of just cutting a piece of, uh, you know, a piece of uh, wood. Wood, yeah, because the heat right here would mess it up. So, and as you can see, if I had a bigger fire pot, I could put something really big on it. Or you could put more than one thing on there. But the grill itself is big enough now I think that right there would be heated up. Let's see. All right, cut that a minute. I'm gonna go get that the other two pots. All right. Now the other part of this thing is gonna be you just take a stick and you cut it to a chosen height, and then you grab this table, and then what you're gonna do is this table is gonna rest on that. Look, that could actually rest on top of that. But we don't want to do that. We want to go underneath it because I'm going to have the bungee protected. So let's see if I can do this. We're going to have the bungee protected by this. There we go. All right. Then I'm going to pull this around and clip it on that hole there. You see that hole on that side? It's just like it on the other side. You see now I just pull this carbon fiber over and see my bungee's protected now from the heat. And then you take this. Now that's up a little bit. Let me move this out a little bit. I think I move it, yeah. Or you can sharpen it a little bit. Push it in the ground a little bit or move it up a little bit. Let's see if we can pull this bungee out. I see this is genuinely, this is genuine, truly an outdoor swamp kitchen. <laughs> all right. Of course, all this stuff that's laying on the ground here is gonna wind up in a backpack attached to a tree. So you can lay your, your stuff here. There, and there's your pot holder. All right, now, let me go around the tree. <clears throat> now you have a good view here. Let's see, you got another cook kit here. You can open this up. Instead of throwing that on the ground, you've got a place to put it. And see, that's, <clears throat> that's the largest table I've ever made. And then we got some items in here. There's a spatula and a spoon. This is a brand new kit. It's off Amazon, one of those cheap kits. And there's uh, two bowls and cups, plastic. I'll probably leave them in here. But see, this is a little pan. Got that piece of paper. This has never been used. Now, I believe there's room for the kettle and the pan and the pot. I honestly believe, and what, what I may do to really test this is I'm gonna put water in all three of these to make the fire. Now, say, for example, if you were making coffee or tea, eggs, and grits, or oatmeal, 
you could cook these on here and say whatever gets done first, slide it to the back and it could stay warm. And you could leave those back because they'll be close to a little bit of heat and then have water always going on the front. And then as things get done, move them over here. And since this ain't plexiglass, you can put whatever you want over there. Isn't that cool? <clears throat> so we're going to start a fire here, put some water in this thing. Fire bag here. I'll try to keep this in here. This is one of the things that I keep whenever I carry a bulk of equipment. And I have like a mora in there for knife carving. And then there's like matches. And so it's a nice place right there just, just to be able to set things. Alright, now this is fat wood shavings. You take a drill bit and you drill into fat wood and you catch the shavings. Alright. So what we're going to do here is in here, I'm going to try to use that. I'm going to, I got in here a lighter and some birthday candles and a piece of wax makeup, but we're going to use the fat wood. So you take a leaf, or a couple of leaves, take a couple of leaves, we're going to put them on top of this wood so that our fat wood doesn't fall to the bottom. And this is an old Tic Tac container. Let's see if it'll come out here. There we go. Now I'm going to try the lighter. It may or may not work. I might have to use a match. Maybe that'll get rid of some of these mosquitoes out here. Have you felt mosquitoes? Yeah, they're bugging me like crazy. Man, they bother Nick all the time, but they never bother me. See, that's not working very good. We might have to use the max the wax pad. It wasn't easy to light that anyway. If it's extremely humid in it, because it's been raining. Yeah. Humid. You need, sometimes you need a large, oh, there we go. There we go. So now what you want to do is before that dies out, you want to start putting this stuff on. Is fat wood the same as uh, heart wood? Yes. It is the same thing. I have, I have, it's funny that you mentioned that. This is, I get those comments all the time, people saying, we call it fat lighter, we call it heart of pine, we call it uh, heart wood. Is it only pine that has that? As far as I know, it is. I guess Where's, around here. Yeah. What is it, turpentine? Is that what you get out of pine? Yeah, we get turpentine out of it. And that's trees. probably the reason why, because of that. Yeah, it has, it, yeah it's got those, those flammable resinous qualities. Now I'm hoping, I believe, now look at that, this is slowly starting to catch these tiny sticks on fire. And a lot of people, they, or well, some people don't understand fire, that there's tinder, kindling, and fuel. And tinder will turn a spark into a flame in five seconds. And then uh, tinder... No, tinder will take a spark in five seconds. And then kindling will take a flame. It'll catch a flame within five to ten seconds. And then everything else is fuel. See, I don't like to just... I like to show how... how this stuff... Uh, how fire gets breathed into life. Like this. And I'm just slowly adding this stuff. You can really see how this thing's lean this way. And then as these smaller sticks catch, they're gonna they're gonna drop down in there. Now you see these flames? We want to quickly take advantage of these flames. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and put some water in here. Let's go ahead and move this right over the top. 
just like that. Right. Now let's see, what am I doing over here? Oh, I need to put a lid on. There you go, just like that. <coughs> Let me put a few more pieces in there to ensure. I see, that's what you want right there. You want when you're cooking food, you like coals. But when you're trying to warm up a kettle or a percolator, you want uh, flames touching the bottom of the pot. This is an eagle kettle. Lot, some people haven't seen it, but it's made over in the UK. It's a it's a very sought after kettle. Is it old? No, it's brand spanking new. <clears throat> My best friend lives in California. Chris. He sent it to me. Eagle Products. See? All stainless steel. Alright, now we're going to see what that thing does. See, so I got my, isn't it neat? I got my leather. Everything's just sitting right there on that table. We're going to see how, how long that fire takes to heat up that water. What was that? Closing this. It's fixing the rain. All those raindrops dropping. There's a big thunderstorm coming this way. That ain't good. Can you hear that water starting to boil? You hear the sound of it? You can hear it a little bit. Yeah, a little bit. The rain is kind of making yeah. it. Now I'm going to put all this stuff up. Uh, this, I'm putting my fire kit back up. Now I'm going to show you something else right here. I'll stack these up. I'll put all this stuff up in a minute. Uh, let's see. Okay, the fire, see where this thing is? Depending on how much fire you want and how close you want this to, I also have an extra set of these that are shorter. See right here? So I can actually pull this bowl up a, uh, I think it was acorns. Look, I think I can, I can lift that up even higher. Another thing you can do is you could probably use some of these for if you wanted to hang something there. Uh, one other thing here, this fat wood dust. This is a very, very neat idea. Look how much is left. You saw what little I took. Now this thing, this is a Tic Tac container. You can open it up and it's for getting out small Tic Tacs. Or if you want to be a pig, <laughs> you're supposed to be able to push on the side. And see, that's how I fill it up. Look, I had it filled up level. So that's good for, like, what, three more fires probably? All right. Now in my pocket here, I have a small thing of instant coffee. I think. So I got my cup right here on the table. We got extra water here. Probably need to put the heavy stuff out here. But that's neat having a table. <clears throat> whenever, one of these days, whenever I plan my trip through the swamp, I'm going to cook a full breakfast on this. Because a lot of times before I go to bed, I don't eat. Look, here's another little tip. See this cup? This is one of those double wall mugs. The handle broke off of it. The handle breaks off, just clean it up because it actually makes it where it's easier to pack. And the fact that it's a double wall, uh, it's not going to get hot on the outside. All right, now I see some steam coming off right there. Let's put a little bit. A little bit of coffee in there. A little bit of instant. Oh, my Jimmy's off camera. <laughs> I'm real picky. <laughs> yeah. Now see, look at that. It's not even down into the bulk of the wood yet. And I've already got... Look at that. You know, hot thing? water sounds different when you pour it than cold water, doesn't it? It is, and it may be, may be part of that sound is coming from the fact that it was hitting a cold cup, maybe. Yeah, that was weird. Yeah, but isn't that cold? I see, now, I can, that water will stay hot without boiling away. Now, let me do something right here. All right, now, my hand, can you see that on camera? 
Yeah, but you can't tell the distance from this angle, but... Well, we'll move it. It's obvious that your hand is behind the, the fire yeah. and it not being harmed by it. Yeah. Now, my hand is warm. Okay, it's warm, but it's not hot. Isn't that cool? Any shield made out of almost anything w would block the heat from hitting the tree yeah, it for a short would. amount of time. Yeah, yeah, it probably would. But I think that carbon fiber... The carbon fiber is good for my bungee too. And it's good if you have the fire for eight hours or you know, or many oh, days. Yeah. yeah. But a quick fire like just to do something like this, yeah. It wouldn't be enough to do any pro you know, any damage. Right. And that just being in a bowl, you ain't gonna want to constantly fill it the whole time. Those things ain't that hot. Look, it's a rolling bowl now. Can you see the steam yeah. coming off of it? Yeah, that's great. All right, now, can you see my hand right here? Now, it's warm, but it's not uncomfortable. I can leave it. Now, if I get a little bit closer, within about a half inch, that's kind of warm. Now, I bet if I put it under here, look, I feel absolutely nothing with my hand under the carbon fiber. So, that's some good stuff right there. It's a little warm up here. I wonder if my bungee's warm. See, that bungee's up high enough that it ain't warm. So, I'd say it's a success. And then when I get done with this to tear it down, all I do is pull these off, and then pull this off. I take my leather and pull this off and dump that in a creek or dump water on it. Hopefully, yeah, I'll dump it out and let it cool. I wouldn't want to put water on it. It may crack it. I want to try something here real quick just for the heck of it. Let's put this on here. I'll take this here just for the heck of it. And I'm going to put a little bit in the water just to kind of judge what kind of heat we got coming off. And I'm just going to watch that. Because like that would say that would simulate if you had some eggs on it. You can look on your uh, thing on YouTube. Your... Uh, what, your timer. Look, the water's already warm. That's not much, but it's warm. That's pretty neat, ain't it? A thing of beauty. It is. <laughs> I love this one. Now, I would never backpack with this setup. I think it's a little too heavy, but kayaking, canoeing, and sledding, and bicycling, I think it's great. Is that steam coming off it? So there's there's plenty of heat coming off there. Ooh, oh, it's hot. That's so cool. <laughs> Mm, that is good coffee right there. All right, well, <clears throat> that's it. That is Generation 3 Trig Grill. The coffee sounds good to me. It is good. It's very good. We're going to make you a cup as soon as we get done. So, <laughs> all right, I hope y'all had fun. I hope y'all enjoyed this. Uh, in the future, I'm going to take this on a trip, and I'm going to cook a full breakfast all at one time. I'm going to cook eggs, grits, maybe sausage, and coffee. Now, well, let's see. I could use this for the grits and the coffee and cook sausage and eggs in those two. So, I think it'll be fun. Hopefully, we'll do it in, a, in the wetlands. Anything you want to add? Not really. All right. Uh, we all appreciate you helping out with the camera work while Nick's working because it just it increases the work for me when I have to film myself. So, to everybody else, uh, take it easy. Enjoy life, get out and have fun, enjoy your family, and we shall see you in the next one. Be nice to everybody.